The first video I uploaded to my channel showed how to set up a CMake project for building native UI applications across Windows, Mac and Linux using WX widgets. It was a good start. The build script automatically checked for the WX widgets library on our system. If it weren't found, the script would download it from GitHub and compile it. However, this initial setup was quite complex, involving multiple CMake list files, lengthy CMake commands, and the need to pass variables across different script sections. But there is a simpler method for managing WX widgets as a dependency with fetch content. Here's the simplest CMake list file that does exactly that. By the way, if you are enjoying this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like button. It's a small gesture that greatly supports the channel's growth. Thank you. Back to the code. First, we specify the minimum CMake version required. While fetch content needs CMake 3.10, the make available command requires at least 3.14. We then define our project, indicating support for C++, and include the fetch content module. Setting the modern C++ standard, we opt for a static build of WX widgets, ensuring the users can run the release build of our app right away without needing to download anything. The crucial step involves instructing CMake on what to fetch and making it available to our app. This process automatically downloads and builds WX widgets and injects its targets into our project. We proceed to create our executable and link it to the necessary WX widgets targets. The code for our application is also pretty straightforward. We have a window and a label. Let's build this thing. The first step is the configuration. That's when CMake downloads WX widgets. Then a single command builds the project and soon our window is displayed. Generating a release build is just as easy. On Windows, simply include the config release option during compilation. This rebuilds the entire WX widgets library with release settings ensuring linkage to the WX widgets production build. Our build artifacts are in the debug and release folders within the build directory. Note that recompiling the debug version doesn't trigger an unnecessary rebuild of WX widgets as we retain build artifacts for both configurations. But that's not all. I'm using Windows in a virtual machine on a Mac, so whenever I want to distribute builds to my clients, I must cross-compile to the Intel architecture. This is also super easy. I initiate the build in a separate directory named Build Intel, specifying the Intel architecture with a A switch. After executing the release build command, the executable for Intel machines is ready for distribution. This setup works also for Mac and Linux. The only difference is that to build both the release and debug versions and be able to switch between them, you'll need to maintain two build trees like this. One last thing. To ensure proper scaling for high DPI monitors on Mac and Windows, you will need to include the InfoPlist file on Mac and the manifest file on Windows. I have short tutorials where I explain these issues, so be sure to check them out. Also, the final version of the CMake template is available on my GitHub, so don't forget to check the video description. Thanks for watching.